Modern Volkswagens use hydraulic clutch lines. Brake fluid runs through this line down to the save cylinder to engage the flywheel and clutch. This runs off the master cylinder right off the clutch pedal itself, and that is how you operate the pedal. Most modern cars, though, come with some sort of restrictor or clutch delay valve. This is not uncommon, and it has been that way for a lot of cars for many years. However, there is something that you can do about this. On Mark VI Volkswagens, these three pieces are what cause that phoning it in feeling when you're driving a stick shift. Um, there's a handful of restrictions in this, and it's pretty straightforward to remove these. So these three pieces, this would go right to the master cylinder behind the clutch pedal. This little circular piece is in itself just a giant restriction used to slow down the clutch pedal. Then you've got this line, which is totally fine, and then the third piece is this bleeder block, which, while I haven't cut one open, from what I've read online, there is another restriction in this that is used for the same exact reason that this is used, to make the clutch more forgiving for newcomers. Also, something that's interesting, this part is off of a 2011 Jetta Sport Wagon. If you go to Volkswagen's own parts site and you put in this part number, it does not say that it's applicable for any Jetta Sport Wagons. From what I can tell, ECS Tuning is the only site that has the correct vehicle application data for this. However, I'll put more information in the description about that if you're curious. From what I understand, all Mark VI Golfs and Jetta Sport Wagons, including the 2.5, the R, the GTI, etc., use these parts, and all of them take the same upgrades for making this a far better experience. This is a kit from USP Motorsports. Uh, it's a spool and block and a stainless steel clutch line. Now, either of these by themselves would provide some sort of benefit to the problem at hand of that delayed clutch engagement feel, uh, but them together, it is a perfect match and it resolves Really all of the issues that I have with this car shifting wise, since I also have the Sigma 6 short shift kit, which is another great option for upgrading the manual transmission experience in these cars. All right, so for this modification, you're gonna be working in the air box and battery tray area. So I've already removed my after work at air box, um, or air intake rather, but if you don't know how to remove that, go ahead and look that up. I can't show you because I don't have those pieces anymore. However, battery, two 10 millimeter bolts for the terminals, 13 millimeter down there. Switch back to a 10 millimeter for the battery tray itself. It's going to be one bolt up here, one bolt over here, right in front of the fuse box, and then another bolt right down here where your positive terminal comes up. Right? The battery tray should be free. Wiggle it out. You're probably gonna have a little bit of finagling to do with this. However, it's certainly not impossible. And there we go. I was a little bit more sideways movement than I was expecting, but I got it. So again, I have a set that's already removed. Basically you need to get a pick or a flathead screwdriver in here to pull up on a clip and it will come right out. You are going to lose some brake fluid with this. Leave the cap on the reservoir on for now. We are going to bleed this at the very end. Okay, so it's not easy to record what I was doing here. Basically, there's a clip like this on each end of it, each end of this line. Pulled up enough and the cable should come out easily. If you're struggling a lot, you probably need to pull the clip out further. Then this started leaking. You can see the fluid down there. So I put the new line in and I routed it down the same way that the old line is going. Now I'm gonna take this out and put the new bleeder block with this new line in there and then we'll bleed it and that's all pretty straightforward but that's where it is back right there the clutch pedal slash master cylinder that's where that is and as you can see there's the old line just sitting there waiting to come out so yeah all right so two things to know about the block the longer end the longer end off of the uh, clip itself goes into the transmission this side gets the line um, the block does come with two new O-rings, however the stainless line also comes with brand new O-rings. So, you'll have spares. So I'm just going to pull that up until it's nice and out of the way so we can fit the new line in. Same thing on this side so that we can just snug it onto the transmission side. And this is an 8mm, you'll want that handy for the bleeding process. Put 
that there, clip it in. Nice and snug, good fitment. Okay. Uh, that took a little bit more effort. That slides on right over, clip it down, wiggle it a little bit, it's all secure. That's it, put that up there, grab this old line. It's got a little mount for it even. And I'd really like to not damage it, there we go. Even pressure, not being too hard on it. Yep, pull it up and around. Like that. And it's out. So I'm gonna take the bleeder off. Set that there. Grab my eight millimeter, drop it on. My little brake fluid line running to a jar. Put that on the bleeder and we will pop open the fluid reservoir and it's gonna be a bit low. So, new fluid, top it off all the way. Okay, so now the reservoir is technically overfilled. However, we're gonna bleed it, get it down to a proper level, that'll be that. So I'm just gonna open this bleeder screw And then I'm gonna pump the, the clutch pedal about five times and then add fluid. I'm just gonna rinse and repeat that until I'm confident. Okay, error on my fault. Uh, I did not put this line in far enough and it's just leaking all my fluid when I'm trying to bleed right out. So let's fix that. Now I have a bunch of brake fluid to clean up what I've done. This is the line that I had messed up. Just make sure it's in all the way like I show here. Also make sure that the stainless line goes into the factory clip that the factory line was in. For bleeding the clutch, you're going to want to use your hand to operate the clutch all the way up and down five times, add fluid, rinse, and repeat until it feels good. For the battery tray, you can also remove the back to make installation and removal easier. I feel like most people that own manual transmissions in this day and age, it's not really anything about longevity or cost of ownership, it's much more about the driving feeling and everything you get with that. Um, for some of these cars, maybe it is just having that taller final gear for highway driving, but if you do care about the driving experience and that's why you have a stick shift car, doing this on a Mark VI Volkswagen is super beneficial. You combine that with a Holy Shift kit from DAP or Sigma 6 diesel geek kit, and it completely changes the way the car feels from that standpoint. I've now done both of them, and I think it's like $350 to do both of those. Um, I think that's completely worthwhile. It's dramatically better. I wish I'd done both of these when I first got the car. I waited on the Sigma 6 kit because of the price tag, and finally I bit the bullet, and it's so much better. And I didn't know about this until my buddy did some research and found that, hey, there is a solution for this. But he had to dig through a lot of Mark 7 articles and forums because I think that's when the VW people really caught on to the fact that this was happening. Um, or at least that's the way uh, Google search engine optimization makes it look. So I'll super recommend it. I'll be linking the items in the description that I ordered. Um, USP shipping was super fast. I had it within a handful of days and I'm in Minnesota, they're in Florida. I wanna say it was like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I got it in three days. It was almost as good as Amazon across the US. I don't know how to properly express how much I recommend this upgrade. Um, I guess if you're at all aware of how the Diesel Geek kit is, I would say that this is something that I would do at the same time if I was to buy another Mark V or Mark VI. I would just get both done right out of the way. You're gonna be in the same spot anyway. It does make a huge difference and the pairing of them is wonderful. It makes it feel much more mechanical and real and one-to-one -one direct.